Don't I just love the contrast of my like fall color sweater next to my Christmas tree? Because I do. <laughs> Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome and welcome back to my channel and today I'm doing my November wrap up. So as I'm filming this, November is not quite done so I could read another book. I will let you guys know at the end what I'm planning on still reading for the month but I'm doing Vlogmas next month and I didn't really want to do my November wrap up in December during Vlogmas so that's why it's going up at the end of November. But if you guys didn't know before me just mentioning it, I am doing Vlogmas next month so I'm basically going to be uploading a video every single day in December. It's crazy. So that is starting tomorrow as this video is going up. So tomorrow I am starting a video every single day for an entire month and I hope you guys are excited. I have some good videos coming your way. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe down below so that you don't miss out on the fun. But let's just get right on into my November wrap up. So, so far I've managed to read six books and I'm hoping to read one more, but we'll see how that goes. So the first book that I read in the month of November was Spirit Bound by Rochelle Mead. I listened to this one on audiobook and it is a reread for me. So this is the fifth book in the Vampire Academy series. So if you don't know what the Vampire Academy series is about, it's set in a world where there are different kinds of like vampires. So we have the Moroi who are the good vampires, we have the Strigoi who are the bad vampires, and then we have the Dampiers who are half Moroi, half human, and they're kind of like the guardians for the Moroi. Within this series we follow our main character Rose and she goes to a school called St. Vladimir's to train to be a guardian so that she can be the guardian for her best friend Lissa who is a Moroi. Anyways, lots of crazy things go on in the series. I highly recommend it but this is the fifth book and I was actually quite surprised with myself because I haven't read this book in a really long time like I genuinely don't remember the last time I reread the series and I actually remembered quite a lot from this book the thing is is that I typically binge read this series when I read it and so I read the books back to back no breaks or anything like that's always the way I would read it so each book would kind of bleed together so I remembered a lot of things about this book going into it but I didn't know that it happened all within this book but I still remembered a lot which is so surprising because I have a terrible memory when it comes to books. So I absolutely adored this book. It's not my favorite in the series I don't think. I think that might be the last one but I can't remember. I think it's either the third one or the last one is my favorite but this one is still really really fun. I love Adrian and he has like a pretty big role in this book which makes me really happy and as much as I love Rose and Dimitri I also really like Rose and Adrian. I just, I'm pretty sure I ship Rose with like any guy she's ever with and I don't know why but I just, I do. I kind of really enjoyed seeing her dynamics with Adrian in this book and kind of seeing everyone's relationships kind of grow. I enjoyed all the drama going on in this book, all of the tension that was present because there's a lot of tension in this book but overall I really enjoyed this book. I'm actually finding myself quite enjoying the audiobooks as well. This is my first time listening to them. My only complaint is that they have sound effects and like music for certain parts of the story. So Rose has this special bond with Lissa where she can see what's happening to Lissa through Lissa's eyes kind of. That sounded weird. And so whenever she's doing that there's like a weird like sound effect over the narrator's voice which is kind of disorienting but I think I've gotten used to it and it doesn't bother me as much as when I listen to Blood Promise. I did really enjoy this book. I'm happy that I'm finally rereading the series and finally making my way through it. I started my reread last May. Like 2019 May. That's crazy. But I'm very excited to continue and read the last book and I just I really love this series so I'm really happy to kind of be back in the world and experiencing everything again. So the second book that I read in the month of November was To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I also listened to this one on audio which was my again my first time listening to an audio so that was a new experience for me. This was quite an impromptu kind of read for me. I kind of saw it on my shelf one day and I was very like mm, like I'm kind of feeling like the To All the Boys vibes like I want the the Christmas the co the, the the everything the romance like I want I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm in the mood for it you know but then I was like mm, I have so many other things to read that I probably shouldn't read it but then I was browsing on my overdrive app and I saw that it was available so I was like mm, I'm gonna listen to it and I'm really glad that I did so if you don't know what this one is about we follow our main character Lara Jean and whenever she is trying to get over a boy that she likes she writes them a love letter of sorts where it's basically just her saying goodbye to that boy and then she puts it away in a hat box doesn't really touch it again she has no intentions of ever sending these letters out but then one day they mysteriously do get sent out and she has to deal with the repercussions of that and she ends up fake dating one of the boys that the letters get sent out to to avoid another boy who got a letter from thinking that she likes him. It's a lot of fun. So I love this book. I've read it many times before but the audiobook was a new experience for me and I actually did quite like the narrator. I feel like she captured the voices pretty well. Like I like the way she did Peter and Lara Jean and all of them but listening to the audiobook did make me notice a few things that I never really paid much attention 
attention to before or that didn't necessarily bother me before. So for example, Lara Jean calls her dad daddy and that doesn't really bother me when I'm reading it and that doesn't really bother me if people in real life call their dad daddy if they're like older. I don't know why, just that it doesn't bother me. But for some reason, hearing it from the audiobook bothered me. Not like a huge amount, like it's not like a big thing that pissed me off or anything, but it was just, it just kind of sounded odd. And then I also kind of noticed that the chapters would sometimes end quite abruptly and that's also something that I never really paid attention to when I'm reading because you know I'm just sitting there flipping through the pages. I don't really pay attention to chapters that often unless I'm like waiting for the end of a chapter so I can stop reading. But like I'd be listening to the audiobook and it just like would kind of stop mid-scene. I don't know, like it would just stop and go to the next chapter and it was really weird. So that's something that I never really noticed when I was reading it physically. So that's just kind of something that I thought was a little odd. Neither of those things though affected my enjoyment of this book. I still really love it. I love the characters. I love the romance. I love the story. I love all the family dynamics in it. I love the baking. Like everything about this book is just a lot of fun. So I had a really good time reading this book and I'm really happy that I decided to impromptu reread it because it was a lot of fun. So the next book I read was another reread. I didn't realize that I reread three books in a row but the next book I read was Matilda by Roald Dahl. I read this for one of my capturing classics reading vlogs that I do so if you want to check it out I will link it up above in the cards. I'm sure everyone knows what Matilda is about. We follow our main character Matilda who is basically like a five six year old genius but her family doesn't appreciate her. They think she's weird. She doesn't fit in. She ends up going to school finding out she has these magical powers and she takes down the principal. It's it's a fun story, you know? So I reread this for that reading vlog. So if you want to know all of my thoughts, you guys can check out that vlog. But I did enjoy it. It doesn't quite stack up to how I remember it being. And I definitely like the movie better. But overall, it was a fun time. And I'm glad that I reread it. Because honestly, I don't even know if I had reread this book before. I'm sure that I had. Like, it's been a really long time since I did. So really happy that I ended up rereading it because it was an enjoyable experience. And then the next book I read, I actually also did for a reading vlog. I do a lot of reading vlogs. So that is A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget. Kimmerer. This was actually one of my favorite books that I read this month and I'm so happy about it. But I read this for my which booktube friend knows my reading tastes the best reading vlog. So I'll link that up above in the cards as well. I love that how that video came out so much. I had so much fun doing it and you guys seem to be enjoying it as well which makes me really happy. But if you have not checked it out yet please go check it out because I'm just absolutely obsessed with it and I'm planning on doing more in the new year once kind of vlogmas is all over. But I'm really excited about it. So go check that out if you haven't already. I'd really, really appreciate it. But A Curse of Dark and Lonely. So uh, this one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which by the way was done so incredibly well. But we follow two different point of views. We follow Ren, who is kind of the beast of the story. He's the prince and he's been put under this curse and every season he has to try to make a girl fall in love with him. If he does not succeed, he ends up turning into a monster and he ends up killing a bunch of people and kind of terrorizing his, his town, I guess. And then we follow Harper, who I suppose is the Belle of the story and she's just like a normal girl. She kind of has like a hard home life. Her mom is really sick from cancer and so they have to kind of find alternate means to get money and to like whatever. And then one day she ends up getting taken by Ren's like guard dude. I don't know what his title is. And ends up being taken to Ren's like little kingdom I guess. And she is the next girl to help try to break this curse. It is such a good book and if you know me at all, high fantasy is really really difficult for me sometimes but I feel like it wasn't too overwhelming with this one because parts of it were kind of grounded more so in reality. So I feel like this one to me read more like an urban fantasy even though I'm pretty sure it's considered high fantasy or at least that's kind of what I've been considering it as. Harper is from the real world. There's technology, cell phones, whatever, but then this kind of kingdom or whatever where Ren lives is a completely different place and it's completely separate from the real world. It could be more of contemporary fantasy. I don't really know, but it was really, really good. It was a pretty easy read. I wasn't confused really at any parts, which is amazing for me with high fantasy. Just in general with fantasy, I tend to have a bit of a harder time just because my brain. I'm always tired. I'm always thinking of other things. My brain's always going a million miles an hour, so I have a hard time concentrating on fantasies but I really, really loved this one. Honestly, I have no complaints about this book. I loved absolutely everything about it. I loved the characters, the Beauty and the Beast fairy tale retelling elements. I loved the romance. I loved the writing. Like everything about this book was good in my opinion. Like I just had such a good time reading it and texting my reactions to Julia who recommended the book for me in that video that I talked about. I feel like the Beauty and the Beast retelling was done so, so well. Like if you guys have any Beauty and the Beast retellings, maybe let me know down below because I'm obsessed with them. And this one, 
I feel like was just done so well. I was so invested in the curse and everything and it was just, oh, it was literally so good and I can't wait to get my hands on the sequel at some point. Probably not till next year, but I am just so excited for it because this one did leave off on a bit of a cliffhanger that I'm quite intrigued by, but I absolutely adored this book and I highly recommend it if you guys like fantasy books, if you like Beauty and the Beast retellings, if you like books that deal with curses, like this book was just really, really good. The next book I read was also kind of like an impromptu read. This was a month where I didn't really follow my TBR that well. This was supposed to be my Cassie Clare catch-up month. Did I read a single Cassie Clare book? No, I did not. My bad. But this one I was not planning on reading this month, but I saw that the audiobook was available and I was like, hmm, I don't know what to listen to, so I'm gonna listen to this. So that book is Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed. This book follows two main characters, Jamie and Maya. Both of their parents force them to go political canvassing together, so door to door, telling people to vote for somebody in the election. I don't really know how to describe this book, but it's based just them political canvassing together and getting to know each other. Anyways, this book was so good. I don't really enjoy reading books about like political things, like elections and things like that, but I did really enjoy Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston and my friend Kirsten read this one and she really enjoyed it and I said like do you think I would enjoy it even though like the whole plot is about like political stuff and she was like you know I feel like it's kind of like red white and royal blue like it's there but it's not like you know too in your face I feel like maybe I just don't like political fantasies I'm not too sure, but I did really enjoy this book. I absolutely adored the characters and their romance together. I also really enjoyed the audiobook. I loved the relationship in this book. I loved how slow burn it was, and I loved seeing Jamie's crush develop on Maya and kind of seeing all the conflicting feelings going on there. It was really, really well done in my opinion. I love slow burn romances. I feel like they're definitely my favorite. I also really liked the characters on their own. Jamie was very, very shy, and I could definitely relate to that. And then we have Maya. Uh, who was just a really fun character to read from. She was so passionate about everything and I really enjoyed reading about characters like that. I just feel like all of the elements of this book really came together and it just worked so perfectly. So I was a huge fan of this book. I'm definitely interested to see what other books Aisha Saeed has. I don't know if she's written other books. I'm sure she has. I need to look into that because she's the one who wrote Maya's parts and I really enjoyed Maya's parts. So I'm very interested to see more books from Aisha Saeed. I'm really glad that I randomly picked Picked this book up. I'm glad I went the audiobook route. I feel like the narrators did such an amazing job bringing this book to life and I'm really happy that I got around to it and I really recommend it that you guys pick it up as well if it sounds at all interesting to you because it's really really good. And then the last book that I've actually read this month is Take a Hint Daniel Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the companion book to Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Guys, I really loved this book. Oh my god. I absolutely fell in love with these characters, with their romance with each other. Everything about it was just so complex and interesting and I was just so invested in seeing how everything played out between them and just like in general with their own lives and everything. Like I was just so invested in literally everything happening within this book. I just realized I didn't tell you guys what this one's about. So we follow one of our main characters, Danny, and she is like very focused on work and school. She's not really into romance. She's been there, done that. She's got burned and she doesn't really want to go back. So she's just interested in finding a perfect friends with benefits situation. Then we follow our other main character character Zaf and he is the polar opposite of that. He loves romance. He reads romance books all the time and he is definitely a hopeless romantic. And they're kind of friends, colleagues, and one day Zaf rescues Danny from a stuck elevator during a fire drill and people think that they are dating and so they decide to kind of roll with it for a little while because it's giving Zaf some good publicity for his rugby coaching like mental health thing that he's got going on. It's called Tackle It, it's really cool. And so they decide to just like kind of go with it. And then Danny is also convinced that like the universe has sent Zaf to her to be her perfect friends with benefits situation. So it's just, oh, it's such an interesting book. Like I said, like I loved all of the dynamics in this book. They work so well together. I love the characters, love the romance. But I think one of the things that I loved the most about this book was Zaf and his anxiety. So he does suffer from anxiety and it's kind of like a big part of his life. I really, really enjoyed reading about him, how he dealt with it, seeing him experience it, seeing how he felt about it, and just kind of seeing his narration about it. I suffer from anxiety. And so anytime I read about a character who has anxiety and I can relate to it on literally any level, I get so 
excited when I feel so seen and I just really really enjoyed this one. There were some moments where Zaf was just kind of like explaining how it affected him and kind of what anxiety meant to him and it like it really hit me which I really enjoyed and I also just really loved the way that Danny approached his anxiety and like reacted to it. I really appreciated those kinds of like positive non like annoyed reactions to it because I feel like a lot of people who don't know what it's like can often feel annoyed by someone who has anxiety and so I really appreciated how Danny reacted to it but honestly just everything about this book was so incredibly well done and I am a huge huge fan of it so if you guys love romance books I definitely recommend picking this one up and then I have one book that I want to read this month still and I have two days to do it but I really want to read Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer this book took forever to get to me in the mail so I would have loved to read this at the beginning of the month but I didn't get it till like last week but I am so excited for this book. I don't even really know too much about what it's about. Something about our main character gets the ability to cast instant karma on people. I'm not too sure, but I love Marissa Meyer. So we'll see if I can actually get to it with two, only two days to read it with everything else that I have going on, but I'm very excited to read it and hopefully I enjoy it. So that was my November wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up. Comment down below what you guys read this month because I'd really like to know. Subscribe if you have not yet already. Like I said, I am doing a vlog this next month starting tomorrow if you guys are watching this on the day it's uploaded. I am just so beyond excited for December and all of the videos I'm going to be bringing you guys so I hope you guys are excited and just make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any of it. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every single time I upload a new video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!